Hello and welcome to Certification Kit, How to Become a CCIE Presentation Part 3. And since this is a very long presentation, keep in mind you can always just type in the URL on the screen there and you can read the document in the, its totality, which is about 14 typewritten pages. So we're going to pick up where we left off before and I want to cover a few more third-party books that I used in my preparation for my CCIE. You could see them listed here. I'm not going to you know, go over them each individually. Again, you could just go back to the URL. You could see all the different resources because throughout this presentation, we probably highlight a bit over 20 different books, videos, and such that you're going to want to become intimately familiar with. Now, as you sit your CCIE, real CCIE lab, um, you're provided with access to Cisco's documentation. Exactly the same documentation that is available to you is, that's at Cisco's website. You should make this documentation a part of your study from day one. I extensively use this documentation consisting primarily of configuration guides, command references, and a master index for Cisco IOS 124T, and have included the links here to the documentation. I really can't stress enough how important it is for you to become intimately familiar with each of these command guides and reference documents. Also you want to note that the search capability is disabled in the real lab exam so you should be very familiar with how to navigate the online documentation. This is the only resource available for reference in a real exam in addition to the command line help. Bookmark it read it, eat it, sleep it, but do not expect to refer to documentation frequently during the lab exam. For the troubleshooting part, remember you only have two hours and you have 10 trouble tickets. As such, you have about 12 minutes to solve each trouble ticket. That time's hardly enough to figure, it, figure out the issue, search for it, find it, fix it, so forget about the documentation for the troubleshooting part. You are a little relaxed during the configuration part and you have a little more time and can refer to the documentation quite a few times. I made use of the command line help mostly and refer to the documentation just a few times. Remember that the CCIE lab is not the time to learn a new technology from documentation. There's simply not enough time to do that. Now, I'm going to reveal to you the biggest mistake I made in preparing for the CCIE exam. What I did is I studied for the written exam first for six months, and after I passed that, then I focused on the lab part. What I should have done in hindsight was just study for the lab, and almost by mistake, I would have you know, covered all the written concepts, and I would have saved myself six months of studying. As you prepare yourself to be ready for the lab exam, you will have built enough knowledge by then to pass your written exam without much difficulty. Right after passing a written exam, you can register for your lab exam. Practicing using full labs on your home lab, reading configuration guides, watching training videos should prepare you adequately for your CCIE certification exam. Time yourself strictly while doing the full labs at this stage because you not only have to be able to do all the configuration and troubleshooting tasks, but you also have to do them in an the allocated time. I would recommend taking at least two weeks off before your scheduled lab date and devote it to full-time lab prep. You can register for your CCIE lab exam without making a payment first, but the payment is to be made at least three months before the exam date. If you're registering for the lab for a date earlier than three months, the payment's due at time of registration. If you need visas to travel to your desired lab location, make arrangements before registering. Choose the lab date carefully, given enough room for final preparation. You cannot reschedule or cancel a lab once payment is made without forfeiting the paid amount. As we touched on before, the CCIE routing and switching lab consists of two parts, troubleshooting and configuration. The total duration of the lab is eight hours, two hours for the troubleshooting part, which comes first, followed by the six hour configuration part. You have to pass both parts separately to pass the lab exam. A candidate may pass one part but fail the other and he'll still fail the lab. It's believed that on average it takes around three unsuccessful attempts before passing a CCIE lab exam. I was myself not able to pass on the first attempt. People will pass on the first attempt, but it's also not the norm. When it comes to running a virtual model of the network in a computer, there are two species of um, 
computer programs, simulators, and emulators. They have an important distinct distinction. A simulator is a software program that attempts to mimic the behavior of another system. Cisco Packet Tracer is a simulator, and though I have obtained and installed it early in my studies, I quickly realized that many of the iOS, iOS commands were not even available on Packet Tracer. I did not use any simulators for the rest of my CCIE studies, therefore. They may have some use for CCNA and possibly CCMP, but for the CCIE test, the depth of the knowledge and the scope goes well beyond the basic iOS functionality that these simulators implement. On the other hand, an emulator em implements a processor and software, so the programs written for the processor can be run using the emulator. Dynamips is a processor emulator for the MIPS microprocessor architecture. Cisco runs on a MIPS microprocessor, so Dynamics can run software written for Cisco routers, namely iOS. GNS3, which is a front end for Dynamics, is a better option for CCIE studies as compared to simulators. However, GNS3 has some serious limitations in the switching area. Switches also run the iOS, but many features are implemented in application-specific integrated circuits. You should remember this from your CCNA days, the ASICs, which are not implemented in GNS3. So that's why GNS3 is not a complete solution to, protect, to practice your CCNA lab, and I'd recommend owning your own private lab. So the CCIE lab exam not only tests your theoretical and practical knowledge, but also your ability to apply that knowledge under pressure. So what I'd like to do now is to cover a little bit of the practical aspects of what to do come exam day. Arrange a travel plan such that you arrive at your hotel with plenty of time in hand the day before the exam. Make reservations for the to leave the day after the exam, not the same evening. This way you don't want to be preoccupied with travel considerations as you're worried about your exam. Choose a hotel close to your Cisco lab exam facility. After reaching the hotel the day before the exam, visit the lab location in the evening. I still vividly remember the look on the face of a CCIE lab candidate who entered the lab after arriving more than an hour late simply because he was lost. He was allowed to take the lab, but he had lost precious time. Don't allow this to happen to you. Have dinner and take a good night's sleep. Some of my friends have faced problems sleeping the night before the lab, so consider taking a sleeping aid if that's the case. Get up early as the exam will start at 7 in the or 7.30 in the morning. It may be a little bit different at your lab location, so check accordingly. Take a healthy breakfast and head towards the lab location. Frankly, the lab start time of 7.30 a.m. is a little early for me, but I was there in time. You should reach the testing center at least 15 minutes earlier, and you may find other candidates who are taking the lab exam with you. The proctor will then lead all the candidates to the testing room at the allocated start time and will give you a brief overview of the testing center rules. He'll assign a station to you and provide you with the logging credentials to access the workstation, access the workstation. The tools available at your Windows base station in addition to the exam environment are notepad, calculator, and your Cisco documentation. You would also be provided scratch paper and colored pencils for writing. In the case of routing and switching, the lab consists of a two-hour troubleshooting part followed by the six-hour configuration part. If you finish the troubleshooting lab part earlier, which isn't really likely, you can move on to the configuration part. Almost midway of your eight-hour lab time, there will be a lunch break of around 30 minutes. You will have lunch with the proctor and the other candidates who are taking the exam the same day, and you can socialize if you feel like it. The lunch time does not count towards your allocated lab, lab time. If you suspect a hardware failure or believe that a router or switch is not showing normal behavior, point it out to the proctor immediately. That's what the proctor is there for, who would, who would typically be a guy with multiple CCIEs himself. Do not spend an excessive amount of time on a single trouble, trouble ticket for the troubleshooting session or a single configuration task for the configuration part. Make note of the part you are unable to do, skip it, and return later if time permits. You need to score around 80% to pass a lab, and if you do the test, the rest right, you may still be able to pass the exam. Be aware that many candidates do not pass a CCIE lab exam on the first attempt. Have a plan B for taking the exam a second time. This will help keep your nervous calm about your first try and you may actually never need a plan B. Lab exam results may not may be available as early as the next morning. The official version though is that the lab, the lab exam results are available within 48 hours. 
CCIEs are required to recertify every two years to maintain active CCIE status. This can be done by passing any current CCIE written exam or any current lab exam. CCIE can also be re recertified by passing the current CCDE written exam or the CCDE practical exam. I plan on to recertify my CCIE by passing a CCIE written exam of another CCIE track. When you achieve your CCIE, you have accomplished something you can be proud of. Regardless of what your initial reason was for pursuing this, the CCIE is, is sure to get you better visibility in the job market, employer and peer recognition, and better career growth prospects. So to summarize things, in order to make your CCIE journey a success, figure out which of the eight different areas or disciplines of CCIE certification that you want to specialize in. There's routing and switching, voice, security, service provider, service provider operations, wireless, storage, and data center. Choose the CCIE track that best suits your interests and current expertise in networking. Select a re renowned CCIE training provider and use self-study material and instructor-led classes if needed for the CCIE lab. Do an analysis of your current knowledge level and choose the most suitable training materials. Invest in a private lab because rack rentals are expensive while simulators and emulators available on the market are not good for practicing the whole range of topics covered in the CCIE blueprint. Start preparing for the CCIE lab right away and take the written exam when you reach the final phase of your lab preparation. Make the official Cisco documentation part of your study plan and use it for reference because the same documentation will be available to you will be available in the lab. The total time it takes to achieve the CCIE will vary depending upon your current knowledge, skill, experience, and capabilities. It took me more than six months to prepare for the written exam and more than a year to pass the lab exam. CCIE is an expert level certification and such requires a lot of reading and a lot of practice. Get familiar with the Cisco website and all the available books from Cisco Press and other publisher. Read books to fill, fill theoretical knowledge gaps. Join in actively participate in online forums by your training provider and by the Cisco Learning Network. Use practice workbooks by your training providers and practice on your home lab as much as you can. Never give up a chance to configure a troubleshoot router or switch at work. And remember, it's not unusual to fail the CCIE lab exam on the first attempt. If this happens to you, don't let it dishearten you. Learn from your experience and try to achieve it the second time. So from all of us here at Certification Kits, we wish you the best of luck on your CCIE aspirations, and hopefully you'll pass the exam on your first attempt. And drop us a line and let us know how it went, and maybe we can add some of your experiences to this blog online. Thank you, and have a great day.